This video provides an overview of connected outcomes and trade-offs, and the ability to resolve situations where strategy is disconnected from financial and operational plans. In a separate video, we provided a detailed description of the maturity model, shown on the right side of the screen. It provides a more detailed description of the capability gaps addressed by the integration-enabled process improvements, shown on the left side of the screen. The title of this YouTube video is shown at the bottom of the screen. In this one, we'll focus on connected outcomes and trade-offs. More specifically, we'll focus on the capabilities that comprise the gap between current state processes that manufacturers typically employ compared to more mature processes that explicitly connect business objectives to financial and operational plans. During the video, we'll highlight these capability gaps in more detail, as summarized on the left side of the screen. We'll also identify incremental capabilities that address these gaps, ones that enable more mature forms of process integration. As we saw in a previous video, a key problem facing complex manufacturers is that their strategies and value propositions are often based on superior horizontal execution. However, they plan, manage, and govern their business along functional lines. In other words, there's a misalignment between strategy and governance. What often results are unclear accountabilities and decision rights for delivering planned business results. From a planning perspective, the challenge lies in translating enterprise targets into those for specific customer segments, business processes, and functions, and to make this process transparent by exposing key assumptions that connect these plans from both financial and operational perspectives. The solution lies in the ability to quickly answer two questions. What do we want to achieve, and what's required to achieve objectives? The framework on the screen provides the means to do this by connecting targets and desired outcomes to resource requirements. Let's first apply this framework to the business as usual part of the process, that being to deliver existing products and services to existing customers and markets. The process determines target service levels and cost structures that support desired volumes, revenues, and margins. Cost structure engineering and continuous target costing are terms that describe this approach. Now target costing is not a new idea. What's new here is that the approach is embedded into a continuous planning and performance management process. The term used to describe this approach is called connected outcomes and trade-offs. This is a high-level planning approach that supports an explicit top-down and bottom-up dialogue one that also results in vast improvements in planning cycle time. It starts by translating overall targets into those for product and customer segments, with a key focus on cost to serve and cost to make. These targets are then translated into financial and operational resources using the steps noted on the right. The first step is to quantify process volume given assumptions about quality and service levels. A key enabler of this process are the planning model capabilities addressed in the integrated scenario video. Three critical ones are summarized on the left side of the screen. Required resources and capacity constraints are quantified by the model, as illustrated by the graphic on the left, given assumptions about mix, productivity, and capacity. Business process costs are calculated, as illustrated by the graphic on the left with the option of separating value-added and non-value-added costs. Targets for trade-off metrics are then defined, similar to the order to cash example shown on the left. This was addressed in a separate video called Cross-Functional Governance. Similar trade-offs are defined for all processes and activities that comprise the order to cash process, as well as all other processes, as illustrated by the process and trade-off hierarchy shown on the left side of the screen. Functional and business process costs are reconciled for all parts of an organization, thereby providing the means to explicitly connect inputs and outputs. This is illustrated by the matrix management graphic shown on the left side of the screen. To this point, we've summarized how capabilities that have been addressed in more detail in other videos support this approach. The new idea here is KPI-sensitive models ones where planning models can be adjusted for changes in key performance indicator targets. For example, an increase in quality and service level targets in order taking might increase the time per order. 
The ability to integrate planning and measurement in this way is central to this planning approach, as is the ability to integrate functional and business process planning. In summary, this part of the approach describes the target setting and translation for the business as usual part of the planning process. This same approach can be used for the strategy translation process, which is often referred to as a balanced scorecard. What's being translated now are changes that the organization seeks to make to the business. A key part of this process is translating strategy into projects and investments to improve the business. This translation process also considers investments in new products and customers. A unique feature of this approach is that resources for business as usual, or ongoing operations, as well as investments, are viewed from a consolidated basis. This ensures that organizations have the capacity to execute their strategy from both functional and business process perspectives. The main point here is that strategy is connected to functions, business processes, and projects. Lastly, strategy is translated to the individual and team level. When we get to this point, people know the business targets they are supposed to achieve. They know that they have the capacity to achieve them. And they also know that they have the decision rights to make necessary changes. What's more, their personal goals and objectives are also defined. What results is full strategic alignment. One thing that results from this approach is dynamic portfolio management because investment portfolios are explicitly connected to ongoing planning processes that integrate financial, operational, and business process plans. For example, the value of investment projects for the order to cash process are reflected in the portfolio matrix shown on the left. New product development can be incorporated into the same portfolio management process, as can other investments and potential cost reduction opportunities. This enterprise view is important because it provides the means to more effectively manage how change is introduced into organizations. The main thing to note about this process is that it enables an explicit two-way dialogue about the resources required to achieve target revenues, margins, and service levels. What makes it so effective is that finance and operations use the same processes and models, connected by explicit and highly transparent assumptions. All of these steps are incorporated into the process shown on the screen. Describing this process in detail is beyond the scope of this video. The main thing to note is that it answers the questions that we started off with, that being, what do we want to achieve and what resources do we need? This process also provides the basis for sustainable cost reduction because it enables cost structures to self-adjust to changing market conditions to deliver target margins. The absence of processes that support these capabilities is one of the primary reasons why organizations have difficulty achieving this objective, along with the others shown on the screen. An important benefit of such processes is that they instill confidence in the fairness of target setting and resource allocation processes. In so doing, they provide the foundation to address a number of common unwritten rules that evolve when this confidence does not exist. For example, when people believe that they need to always under-promise and over-deliver, it undermines forecasting processes. Likewise, when people believe that they always need to make and spend their budgets, it undermines cross-functional resource allocation. The point here is that this connection between target setting and resource allocation is critical, especially for those that seek to establish effective performance cultures. This video provided a brief overview of connected outcomes and trade-offs. Further details about capability differences can be found in the YouTube video shown at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for watching this video. Please use the contact information provided on the screen for further details about its contents or how we might be of assistance.